All right, this is wild. The person you're looking at might not even be me. I'm using something called Van Animant. It's free, open source, and can run right on your computer. Let me show you how crazy it gets. What is Van 2.2 Animate? Some of you might be familiar with Van 2.2 in general, but if you're not, check this out. Enough of that. Now, Van 2.2 Animate specifically uses a driving video, just like this one, to either replace the character in the video with someone else, or put the movement of me, in this case, into another scene. Let's talk about how does this actually work. It works by one, analyzing the face, and then using open pose to analyze the actual arms, the actual movement, and then it creates a mask over what you want to diffuse and puts all of that into the AI model. And with all that information, it can create these really nice videos. So let's check out ComfyUI for a closer look. Workflow is based on KeyJ's workflow. It's, um, if you go right here and browse templates, you can actually find it. It's quite similar. I have just changed a few things like using GGOF files, which I prefer because I don't have too good of a computer and it makes running it a little easier. Now I'm going to keep this section without cuts. I'm going to try to go through everything and explain it so that you can actually follow it and make the same kind of videos. So we start kind of here. Um, if you don't have the models and you don't have the custom node and it's saying errors or something, you really need to learn how to download models and put them in the right folders. I will have all the links down below. I'll have a written out tutorial for where to put these things and you will need to learn how to do that. Every single workflow, every single thing in Comfy always starts with that. So it's definitely a skill I would learn. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you might want to start somewhere else as well. So anyway, for the intermediate Comfy users, we're going to continue. First, we just upload an image of the character we want to do, replace, whatever. I would make sure it's a high quality image. If it's too low, the results are not going to be as good. Now we're going to choose a video. In this case, I have just an example, it's timeline four. Here, I would also recommend adjusting the video beforehand. So I have actually already made it 16 frames per second and 720p. This just makes it easier when, yeah, when doing this, right? It just makes it easier. The frame's are already there. Um, you get better results, I've noticed. Okay. In the video with someone else, place the character in the video with someone else. Right, so here I'm saying that. So we're just gonna replace the character. So we wanna make me, George Clooney. Now, how can we do this? <coughs> well, there's two modes, as you see, mix and move character replaces what we want to do so um we need to disconnect if we want to do move we don't want to do we want to do mix so everything can stay connected okay um the prompt doesn't really matter a lot i've put realistic 4k and the negative prompt just to make the quality a little better um create the video 16 frames per second yeah this looks fine this will probably be full um, once the workflow is out, I'll have a sort of day one update. Um, but yeah, we uploaded this. We have the LoRa's loaded. We have the clip, the GGUF files, everything here. Also important in the detection, there's more stuff, right? These are subgraphs. And these have also models like YOLO, XY, Onyx, um, and those things that you're going to need as well. Now, once we run it, what will happen is this will update, you see? Now we're kind of lucky because the green point is what's supposed to be selected, so in this case me, and the red is what's not supposed to be selected, the background in this case. Now this works great, but if it isn't, you need to stop the workflow here and add some green dots to what you want to replace and some red dots to what you don't want to replace. But this looks fine, so we're gonna leave it 
like that. I'm going to access the subgraph. <clears throat> now, I did mess up a little bit here, so we are going to interrupt it real quick. So this is this is real. I just want you guys to know this is real. Um, you can see here frame load cap, it's 49 frames. And this is doing 100 frames, which will just take a really long time. So I'm just going to put it also to 49 frames. The seed is fine. Did I miss anything else? I don't think so. No. So let's continue again. Let's see? Okay. No, I think we are looking good. Now I'm going to fast forward and we'll see you at the results. Wow, okay. Looks like we're finished. Um, we've got 18 minutes for 49 frames. Let's hope it actually looks good. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Not too bad. All right, so definitely... The audio always sounds a little off, you know? Um, there's things like infinite talk and other things that kind of work better with lip sync, but it is fine. And obviously I'm holding a microphone um, and he isn't. So he's just kind of got his hand here. But I think we can make it work. Now this, okay, great. Um, that worked fine, I've put it in the video and yeah. I think it looks good. Now we're going to do the second type of um, animation that we can do with this. And that is... Into another scene. So this in this case, I want to be put into the scene. I just want them to kind of do the hand movement I'm doing right there. Um, so what we're going to do in this case, and it says it right here, so you know you can read the notes. Um, we want to do post transfer move. So if you to switch move mode, please disconnect background video and character mask. So let's find it. Background video, disconnect link, character mask, disconnect link. And now we're running again. This is probably going to take a bit. Oh, again, you see, you just make little mistakes. Um, and my mistake here is how many frames is this? 53 and I have 49. No, nope, I just found 53. And now it's 53, and now I'm running it. <clears throat> now, again, just like last time, we want to go into the subgraph here and check out if it's good again. Nope, it's totally fine. Um, I'm also going to have some masks preview in the, um, in the workflow you're going to see, and this is what this is for. So you can kind of see if the masks worked, because if they don't work, you will see that it's selecting something else. And then you know that the issue is with this subgraph. Um, yeah, and while that is doing its thing, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check out this subgraph. Um, now, it's pretty simple. Van animate to video, going into the case sampler. Here it's happening, it's using six steps. It's using the lighting LoRa to make that possible. CFG has to be one because it's distilled. Um, this stuff is gonna change as well, I'm gonna say that because this is for making the video longer. So kind of batching it because like you've already seen with, with the um, post-processor, I don't have enough VRAM. I don't have the best computer. I'm not even using the best model. I'm using a quantization that's a little bit lower than the, the actual model. So that's what that used to be for the original work from KeyJ. But in my case, I have seen some things about cue triggering and I'm going to work that into the workflow where it's just going to kind of do one after another after another and I don't need to have a bunch of different subgraphs kind of working one after another. Um, it's just going to trigger the workflow again and again. Yes, same with 
it's saying like Laura key isn't loaded. We don't see it here now, but that should also be fixed soon. Okay, now let's let this run, I guess. Okay, and I just want you guys to see it just failed. It's like the same kind of video. Everything is pretty much the same that just worked and just failed. The reason is it's probably too much VRAM, running too long, etc. These things happen. ComfyUI and all this stuff is open source. It's for free. People work very hard on it. It's not perfect. It's not going to work like paid software. It's not going to be you put something in and it's perfect. So I just want you guys to think about that because I see a lot of comments and Reddit and stuff. Things are not perfect. You got to definitely use your brain on this one. So as you can see in the last generation, it didn't work out very well. The images didn't mix very well. Now, this brings me to a tip. It's best to use an input image that is similar to the input video in style, in lighting, in where the characters are. This is going to ensure you get just better quality. It looks more realistic and better renders. Now, a good way to achieve this is by using an image to image model, something like when edit and simply taking a screenshot of your input image and then making it what you want, making a Star Wars scene, making um, an animation out of that first image, that screenshot, and then they're going to be closely related. I'm going to put some generations up on the screen for you guys to check out. In the future with this workflow, I really want to add support for queue triggering, where you can set a certain number of frames for each batch, and then it will do each cycle one after another and stitch the videos back together. This means even when you have low VRAM, you can do high frames. So you can make long videos. They will just take longer and longer. Um, but it is just too much for today. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I'll make a part two if I see some support and I'll see you again.